Welcome to Module 2 of the ICO's Data Protection and PECA training. In this session, we are going to look at some key definitions in the UK GDPR and the DPA. By the end of the module, you will be able to understand key data protection definitions, explain the meaning of personal data, and identify the difference between a controller and a processor. Remember, you can pause this module at any time to look at the legislation or even to take a moment to absorb the information. So let's get started. These are the definitions we are looking at today. They are in Article 4 of the UK GDPR and Part 1 of the DPA. We will discuss the definition of a controller and processor at the end, but while we are discussing the other definitions, remember that the controller is the organisation responsible for the processing of the data. Let's start with the data subject and consider their personal data. Personal data is any information relating to an identified or identifiable living person also known as a data subject. Note a deceased person is not a data subject and data relating to them therefore does not fall under the data protection legislation. In many cases it is clear there is no doubt that data such as your name, qualifications, salary, address and hobbies is about you and is related to you. And so the key questions are can a person be identified from the data? And does the data relate to an identifiable person? In most cases, the data will obviously be about an individual who can be identified from it. For example, the ICO holds my personal data in a record, which includes my name, job title and salary. The question of a photograph is less clear. Whether a photo of me is personal data will depend on the nature of the picture. Am I identifiable from the photo? Is the image linked to my name? Am I the focus of the photo? If people are incidentally captured in an image and are clearly not the focus of the image, for example, a busy street scene, the image is unlikely to be personal data. Other examples include my manager's opinion of me in a performance review the valuation of my house for the assessment of my council tax, a complaint about my work. Note this will be my personal data because it relates to me, but it will also be the personal data of the complainant. The last example here is my car registration number in the hands of the ICO. There is no means of knowing I own a particular car by looking at the registration number alone. However, because the ICO can look up a registration number and see that the car is mine, this number becomes my personal data in the hands of the controller. In this case, the controller has used other information it has access to to identify who an individual is. This means that whether data is personal data depends on the context. For example, in some circumstances, data may not be personal data, like a job advert with a starting salary which doesn't relate to anyone. But in other circumstances, if the same salary details are linked to a name, for example, when the vacancy has been filled and there is a single named individual in post, the salary information about the job is personal data relating to that employee. It's therefore not always obvious when data is personal data, but there are key points you should consider. These key points include the context in which the data is held, whether the individual is really the focus of the data, what the data actually tells you about the individual, whether the data is being used in a way that might have an impact upon the individual, and also whether the data is that of a sole trader or a limited company. Data concerning a sole trader is personal data, but data concerning a limited company is not. 
Let's consider some more examples where it's less obvious. The first example is a meeting note held by a business recording an employee's attendance and contributions in a work meeting. Hopefully it's clear that the list of attendees at the meeting is the personal data of identifiable individuals. However, an employee's contribution to a meeting is more debatable. For example, if the people in the meeting discuss and record details about the employee's poor performance, then this is that individual's personal data. Likewise, the employee's opinion about a new project is their personal data. But if the meeting note records that the employee in the meeting merely explained the company's policies, their contribution doesn't relate to them and so isn't their personal data. The second example concerns a hospital complaints file detailing an investigation into a complaint about standards of care. This comes up a lot. We often get complaints about requests for personal data held in complaints files. Imagine an individual makes a complaint to a hospital about the standards of care in a ward and about a particular nurse. The hospital creates a complaint file and conducts an investigation. The individual who made the complaint then requests a copy of the file because they want to know what has happened. However, just because someone makes a complaint, this doesn't mean that the whole complaint file will be their personal data. The details of the complaint itself will be the complainant's personal data, but any disciplinary steps taken against the nurse as a result of the complaint would not be the personal data of the complainant. A note on the file explaining that the complainant was removed from the premises because of threatening behaviour is that individual's personal data because it relates to them. If some of the information in the file is about general standards of care on the ward, then it won't relate to any one individual and so won't be personal data at all. So in this situation, the controller must identify the personal data and decide who the data subject is for each piece of information. Let's now come back to photos and explore these in a little more detail. We've said we need to consider the context of the personal data, and this is relevant when thinking about a picture of a crowd at a football match. In this example, the purpose of the photograph and its processing is relevant. If a crowd of people at a football match are photographed by a journalist, the individuals caught in the photo are not its focus. It is not intended that the photo will be used to learn or decide anything about them. It is therefore not personal data. However, if one of the crowd members is recognised by a work colleague who then sends the photograph to their employer to prove that the person is not sick, the employer will be processing the photograph as personal data. So we see that the context of the data is really important. Don't forget the guidance if you need help. It covers the key issues and contains lots of really useful examples. The next definition we will think about is pseudonymization. This is a key measure in the UK GDPR, which can be used to ensure security of processing. So the definition of pseudonymization is the processing of personal data in such a manner that the data can no longer be attributed to a specific data subject without the use of additional information. This contrasts with anonymization, which is where the means of identity are removed altogether. For example, I may be referred to as patient 51 in a hospital document, but the hospital is able to look up patient 51 and identify that it is me. For the purposes of that document, I have been pseudonymized. But if the hospital has no way of telling who patient 51 is, then the data has been anonymized. 
Note that pseudonymization is largely a security measure and that pseudonymized data remains personal data. Another key definition concerns the type of data which falls under the data protection legislation. The legislation applies to the processing of all personal data held on a computer in electronic format. But it also applies to manual data when held in a structured filing system. Manual data is paper-based data. A filing system is any structured set of personal data which are accessible according to specific criteria. So a filing cabinet containing files ordered alphabetically or in chronological order is a structured filing system and falls under the legislation. It also applies to data intended to form part of a filing system. This means that data protection applies to a list of names in a set of notes which is about to be filed or input onto a computer. If the controller holds what we call manual unstructured data, let's say piles of paper it has never filed and has no intention of filing, then the UK GDPR and the DPA do not apply to this data unless the controller is a public authority. For example, the contents of my ICO locker are definitely unstructured. If manual data is not structured and is held by a public authority, different conditions apply because the public authority is subject to the Freedom of Information Act. If you need to find out more about this, please refer to the Data Protection Guidance for more information. Now may be a good moment to pause this module and look at the definitions provided in the UK GDPR. Have a look at the text of Article 4. Processing is also defined by the legislation and covers all these operations. Note that data sharing counts as disclosure. Note also that storage, simply holding the data, counts as processing. A controller therefore doesn't have to be actively doing anything with the data for it to be caught under the definition of processing. The next definition we will look at is the personal data breach. This is a breach of security leading to accidental or unlawful destruction, data loss or alteration, unauthorised disclosure or unauthorised access to personal data transmitted, stored or otherwise processed. Notice it's not simply a question of the disclosure or loss of personal data. Here are some examples of data breaches which may have serious consequences for the individuals whose personal data is involved. A politician leaving a file on a train. A teacher leaving a confidential file on a photocopier. A social worker sending a child's sensitive personal data to the wrong person. A medical employee accessing a patient's file without permission. A bank losing a CD containing customer bank details and an ICO caseworker sending details of a complaint to the wrong organisation. In all these circumstances, we would expect the controller to consider whether the breach should be reported to the ICO. For example, we have internal procedures in place for circumstances where a caseworker sends data to the wrong organisation. The controller should tell us of any personal data breach unless it is unlikely to result in a risk to the rights and freedoms of natural persons. Data processors must also inform controllers of any breach. There are other important definitions which you should be aware of. Part 7, section 204 in the DPA gives miscellaneous UK specific definitions, including a health professional and social work professional. Schedule 3 of the DPA gives other useful definitions which concern the processing of health data, social work data, education data and child abuse data. 
you will need to look these up when required. A recipient is defined in Article 4 of the UK GDPR as a natural or legal person, public authority, agency or another body to which the personal data are disclosed. This is relevant in the context of data sharing. The DPA also defines inaccurate in Part 7, Section 205, and it explains that in relation to personal data, it means incorrect or misleading as to any matter of fact. You might think it's obvious, but it's a really useful definition to have, and we will discuss why in the module which covers the principles. And finally, two other really important definitions. A controller is a person, public authority, agency or other body which alone or jointly with others determines the purposes and means of the processing of personal data. And a data processor is a person, public authority, agency or other body which processes personal data on behalf of the controller. For example, the ICO is a controller and processes our personal data. It may send out our payroll details to be processed by another company and that other company is a data processor who processes the data on behalf of the ICO. But it is the ICO as the controller who determines the purposes and means of the processing. Here is another example. A local council wants to promote recycling in its area and contracts a private company to send out mailings to local residents to encourage them to support the initiative. The council gives the company a copy of its database of names and addresses. The company then uses this database to send the mailing out and record any responses. In these circumstances, the council is a controller because it is determining the purpose for which the data are being processed and the means of the processing. The private company is a data processor because it is processing the data on behalf of the council and following the council's clear instructions. It is not a controller because it has no say in either the purpose for the processing or the means of processing. The controller must have a contract in place with the processor and we will discuss what this should cover in a later module. Note that if the company start to process the data for its own purposes, it will become a controller. In other circumstances, two or more controllers might act together to decide the means and purpose of the processing and in this case they would be joint controllers. For example, two shops might decide to work together on a sales promotion. They amalgamate their customer databases and send out a joint promotion to both sets of customers. They are joint controllers because they are acting together to decide the purpose and means of the processing. Note that the two controllers who share personal data might remain as separate controllers if they process the data for different purposes. You have now completed Module 2 and you should be able to understand the key data protection definitions, explain the meaning of personal data and identify the difference between a controller and a processor. And finally, there is further information on these topics in our guidance on our website and you will find the relevant links in your notes. The guide to the UK GDPR contains detailed guidance aimed at controllers and there are a few key sections listed here which are relevant to our discussion today. Don't forget that for internal use, we also have knowledge packs and the knowledge builder, which are other valuable sources of information. I hope you've enjoyed the module and that it's been useful for you. Thank you for listening.